Hello everyone, this is Rabbity's Blog, and welcome to my new TV show review series. Today's TV review is on the popular dark comedy animated series, Invader Zim, and was requested to me by Shamex2. You can check out Shamex2's channel in the description box below, and here's my review on Invader Zim. Invader Zim was a Nicktoon that aired on Nickelodeon from 2001 until 2002, and re-aired on Nicktoon's network in 2006. It was created by famed comic book writer John Voss, who also wrote popular comic books like Johnny the Homicidal Maniac and Squee. Basically, this show is about how an alien invader named Zim, who is a part of the great alien race called the Urken race, hears about how the almighty tallest, two aliens who were made leaders of the Urken race because they were the tallest aliens, are planning to send their best Urken soldiers to become invaders of the planets they are assigned for, which the plan is called Operation Impending Doom Number 2. Zim, however, wanted to prove to the leaders of his planet that he could be a great invader, and of course, the almighty Talus is skeptical about making Zim an invader, because in Operation Penny Doom Part 1, Zim started attacking his own planet, even though his allies were trying to tell him that he was still on their home planet when Zim started invading. So in order to get rid of Zim, since the leaders of the Urken race can't stand Zim, the almighty Talus sends Zim to the planet Earth, along with a malfunctioning Sir robot named Gurr, and Zim's quest to overtake the planet Earth begins. Now, I will admit that when I first heard about the show, I was actually skeptical about watching the show because I thought that it was going to be another show where gross humor rules the day, and at first glance, it seemed like it probably would have been that type of show. Man, was I wrong. Sure, Avengers Zim had its moments of being a bit gross, but after I had seen the show long after it was canceled, I realized that this was a comedy series that was actually very intelligent and dark at the same time. John Voss gives us a cartoon series where we explore the usual topic, Aliens of Veda Planet, and turn it into a creative and interesting take on the common subject matter. Where the topic of alien invasion is usually considered dark, it's turned into a hilarious dark comedy that really made the show stand out from other dark comedy cartoons. I really love the way that the show blended the dark tone of the show along with the hilarious scenes in the show, mostly stemming from Zim's inability to take over the Earth either due to his oversized pride, the fact that his robot girl often messes up the missions, or because of his rival Dib, who is the only human being on Earth who knows that Zim is an alien and tries everything to stop him from invading the Earth. I also enjoy the dark content presented in the show, which actually gives the show a sort of uniqueness that you would never really see in most children's cartoons, such as the dark episode Dark Harvest, when Zim ends up stealing the other kids' internal organs and putting them in his body so that way the nurse at the school wouldn't notice that Zim is really an alien, since Zim's insides are much different from a normal human being's. Probably the best part about the show was the characters, as they were all unique and brought something interesting to the show. First, we have Zim himself, the alien who was assigned to take over Earth, but has proven over and over again that his pride is making him fail to really take over the Earth every time. I just love Zim himself, as he can be both hilarious and threatening at the same time, and it's those two traits of Zim that really made him stand out in the show. I love seeing Zim sometimes fail in his missions to take over the Earth because it shows so much hilarity in the show, and the way that he misunderstands the ways of Earth is just too priceless. It was also interesting seeing scenes where Zim can be quite frightening in his test to take over um, Earth, such as the Dark Harvest episode, where he steals the other kid's internal organs, and the Bestest Friends episode, where he uses a machine to rip out another kid's eyes out. I also love the episode where Zim seems to be competent in saving the world, especially in the episode Tack the Hideous New Girl, when another alien invader named Tack actually takes over the planet Earth and Zim has to stop her. Richard Horvitz was the perfect choice for voicing Zim, as he actually portrays Zim's laugh as being both menacing and creative to hear, and I also love the way that Richard Horvitz gives Zim a high squeaky voice that really fits his overconfident attitude. It also helps that Richard Horvitz had voiced Daggett Beaver from the Angry Beavers before the show, and I can't help but hear Daggett's voice every time Zim talks, which I really enjoy listening to. But enough about Zim, let's talk about Gurr, Zim's odd and naive robot sidekick. Gurr is probably one of the most interesting and hilarious characters on the show, and the fact that Gurr is shown as a malfunctioning robot who spews random sayings that sound weird yet funny at the same time makes Gurr into an incredibly memorable character for the show. Rose Eric, Ricky Simmons, did a brilliant job of voicing Gurr, Gurr as he provides Gurr with a squeaky and robotic voice that really fits Gurr's hyperatic nature. And with every show where you have an alien invader threatening to take over the world, you gotta have a protagonist who is willing to stop the alien invader at any cost, and that character would be Dip. 
Dib is probably the only character on Earth who knows that Zim is an alien, although I find it kind of odd that no one but Dib notices Zim's green skin and his human form. And I really enjoy Dib's character, as he may seem panicky, but he is very intelligent and is probably one of the few characters in the show who is able to thwart Zim's plans at world domination. Annie Berman has done an excellent job of voicing Dib, as he makes Dib sound so frantic, which really brings out the eccentric nature of Dib. There are other characters, too, like Gaz, Dib's youngest sister, and the almighty tallest, the two leaders of Zim's home planet, but I would be here all day explaining them. So I'll just say in, it in short that all the characters in Invader Zim were awesome and a joy to look at in every episode. The only problem with the show really stems from the everlasting controversy this show suffered when it aired on Nickelodeon. Which makes me wonder about what channel would be would have been more appropriate for Invader Zim to get the kind of success it needed to run much longer. Hmm, maybe MTV or Cartoon Network would have been better since they usually air a lot of mature cartoons. Although Invader Zim is not as mature as Cartoon Network's Adult Swim or some of the cartoons on MTV. But the issue here is that Invader Zim is a really dark cartoon that happened to air on a children's network. Now you see where the controversy got started. However, Nickelodeon did air, once air mature shows on their channel, the most popular example being Ren and Stimpy, but these shows were shown during the 90s, which begs the question, would Invader Zim have been more successful to air during the 90s? My answer to that would be yes and no. Yes, because since the majority of Nicktoons that came out on Nickelodeon during the 90s had your usual adult content snuck in, Invader Zim might have made it through at least four seasons at the time. And no, because since Ren and Stippy, a show that was pretty violent and mature for its time, and had also suffered controversy, Invader Zim would have still gone through some kind of controversy for being disturbing. So it was kind of 50-50 on this particular situation with Invader Zim. The whole idea about Invader Zim being too disturbing for small children, episodes like Dark Harvest and Best's Friends definitely testify to that, would be problematic for the show to succeed. And because of the show's unfortunate cancellation, we would probably never find out if Zim was able to take over Earth, or if Dib ever stopped Zim from taking over the Earth. So my question to anyone who watches this review is, do you think that Invader Zim would have been more successful if it had aired during the 90s, or if it had aired on another channel like MTV or Cartoon Network? Please feel free to comment below. Invader Zim ran for two seasons with a total of 27 episodes. Overall, I'm giving Invader Zim a thumbs up. I would highly recommend the show to anyone who's a fan of John Vosk works. This is clearly one of the best dark comedy shows I've ever seen, as all the characters in the show were truly creative and unique to look at. The premise of the show is truly unique and interesting, as you would have never seen a show that turns a concept about alien invasions into something comical and disturbing at the same time. Well, that's my TV show review on Invader Zim, and be sure to stay tuned to my other TV show reviews in the future. I'm Rabbit Ears Blog, and I'll see you later.